Hey there YouTube, I want to teach you how to create a super easy to use deepfake tool with your stable diffusion using the Roop extension. But this thing's a lot more than just a deepfake tool that you can put a guy's face on a girl's body or your favorite actor on someone else's body. This is a legitimate tool that will help you improve your AI art, help you fix faces, and even swap your character's face to one that you might prefer. This is definitely something that you can add to your workflow and it's not just like a novelty thing where you just do some deepfakes every now and then. It's super useful and this tool is also very easy to use and very easy to install. Just think of this tool as like instant embedding file that you can use immediately without trading hundreds of images to get the likeness of a character. Instead, you can get the results in a single image. Now embeddings and lower files will always have the benefit of having the right face proportions and body size, but we can do something for that. But let's take a look at the results from Root. If you don't know what embedding files or lower files are, just go ahead and check my video description. I got a full tutorial on how to use them and what they are. Alrighty, this is going to be a super easy install but you're gonna need some stuff for your PC that you don't have right now and the first one is Visual Studio and by the way all the links are in the video description but you can also get it from the github repository for some dev and I'm not being general that's actually the user's name some dev so the first thing we're gonna need is Visual Studio and all the libraries that come with it so go ahead and click on that and then the option you're looking for here in Visual Studio 2022 is the community one free download so click on that don't worry about all this stuff that pops up don't freak out that's that's just extra stuff. Just look at your downloads and you'll see the Visual Studio setup. Just go ahead and click on that. It's going to ask you if you want this app to make changes to your device. Of course, say yes. And Visual Studio is legit. It's a Microsoft app. Don't worry about it. And then you're going to get this message right here. Just go ahead and click continue and let it do its thing and download and install the initial install. Now you're going to see a lot of stuff, but you don't want most of this check mark. You just want three things here. So go ahead and uncheck mark everything except Python development, desktop development with C++. The last one you need is the Visual Studio extension development, and you'll find that in other tool sets. So just make sure those three are check marked. So I got Python development. I got my desktop development with C++ and I got the Visual Studio extension development. Those are the only three we need. Now go ahead and install. You can install while downloading or download then install. Now I would recommend restarting your computers just to clear anything that's in cache. All right, next you want to head over back to the GitHub site and copy this code here where it says pip install in site face. Now we got to run a command real quick. So go ahead and go back to the GitHub page and copy the pip install in site face equals equals 0.7.3. So highlight it, right click and copy. Now open up your command prompt. So just you can either press Windows key or type Windows key R and then type in CMD and press enter. Now in your command prompt, you can either press control V or you can just right click anywhere in a blank space and it'll paste the code for you. Now press enter. Now I'm getting a lot of warnings because I already installed this, but you should get a lot of colorful text. If everything worked well for you though, to the next chapter, but if you had some issues and if you don't see a new release of PIP is available, you might have to stick around and do some troubleshooting with me. So if you put in the command inside face equals equals and press enter and you got something like error pip is not recognized as ex internal or external it might be having a hard time finding your path when you upgraded to the newer version i'm not really sure why this is but let's fix this but first let's check if that's the problem so let's type in pip and then dash dash that's two dashes and then version and press enter if you see something similar to what's on my screen, then you should be okay, but let's investigate even further. Let's type in echo percentage path and then percentage again. Now you're gonna get your paths and really what you wanna see here is something that ends with scripts and right before that is a folder, Python 3.10. So if you look at this one right here, it says scripts and then Python 3.10. Now this is only for the people that had errors. So if you're watching this and you didn't have an error, just go to the next chapter. Okay, so the path's there, so we shouldn't have a problem. So, um. It could be pip. So let's install the older version of pip. To install the older version of pip, all you gotta do is type in python m and then pip pip and install and pip again then equals equals 22.2.1. I'll put that in my video description so you can copy and paste that in here. And just press enter. And now that's gonna install the older version of pip. Now it's, it's giving me a bunch of warnings because I already installed this. I'm on version 22.1. But if you're on the newer version, it's gonna give you a bunch of colorful text. After you've done all that, Go ahead and grab the command again, the pip install, just highlight it, then right click and copy on it. Then go back to your command prompt, right click in there and press enter, and you should be able to install it now. Now, if you've already had this installed, you'll get some yellow text. Now you should hopefully be good to go. Now, one more additional troubleshooting thing, the devs here recommend to download it and install this file. If you have this error, none type. So if you're getting this error, go ahead and download this in swapper. 
Then on the left is my stable diffusion folder that has my .bat file, the one that you use to run stable diffusion. So go ahead and click on models, then click on root, and then drag that in swapper in here. So I already have it, so I don't need to let go of this and drag it in here. But you get the idea. And that should prevent most of the errors you get. So now let's move on to the final part of the install, which should only take a couple of seconds. All right, we should be up and running. So now we're in stable diffusion. So for the last part, all we got to do is install the extension. So go to extensions. I'll go to the sub tab available. Now I'm unclicking on installed, but you should have it clicked. I'm just doing this because it's already installed and it won't show up unless I do that. So I'm going to load from and then in the search bar here, I'm going to type in root. You can also do control F to find it. And there it is. SD web UI root. And what you want to do is click on install. And this one's going to take a little longer to install 30 seconds to a minute. So don't freak out. It's not broken. It's just installing. But of course, once you've installed it, click on the installed sub tab right up here and then check for updates. And of course, click on apply and restart UI. And now you should have root. All right. So when you first get in, you're probably like, where, where is it? Right? So it's in text to image, image to image, and it's also in in painting. So if you go in text to image and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see something here that says root version, whatever it is. So go ahead and click on that to expand it. And it's a very simple interface and it's really easy to use. But let's take a look at image to image. And over here, it's in the same place down here at the bottom. You open up root. There it is. Same thing with inpainting. You click on inpaint. It's in the same exact place. All right, so let's go over root. Now everything will work exactly like it would when you're using stable diffusion, the text to image, the image to image. It's going to work almost exactly the same with the exception of root. So all your settings will actually affect the picture. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's test this out with text to image first. So I put something in the positive prompt up here. So portrait of a Navi avatar showing teeth, just a very basic prompt. And then I put a negative prompt, NSFW, nudity, and this negative prompt, which is uh, an actual embedding. And I also added a default negative style. And if you don't know about styles, all you got to do is put in a prompt that you like, a negative and a positive prompt, then just click on save here and then just type in the style name. And then you'll have that style in this window right here. So if you didn't know, that's what it does. And now you could just select a bunch of them if you wanted to. And it's a pretty easy way to save your negative prompts so you don't have to type it in every time. All right, so I'm going to set the height and width above 768. So this is fine. Now I'm going to go down to Roop. And Roop is pretty easy to use. So all you got to do is put in the image of the person you want to use. So let's use a picture of Angelina Jolie first. So go ahead and put that in root. Then the most important thing is that you want to enable it. So this is something that's easily missed. It's so small that it's really hard to see. So make sure it's enabled or it's going to do absolutely nothing. Next, you'll see a box that says comma separated face numbers. And what this is, is the order that root will select the faces. So Starting from the left is zero, then it gradually moves to the right one, two, three, and four. So now this doesn't apply to the picture down here in root. So if you have a picture in root that has multiple people, it's only going to choose the person on the way left. So just keep that in mind. Normally for root, you'll just have like one face, just like that. But if you wanted to, you could put this one face on four different characters by putting zero, one, two, and three. So you can have zero right here, one, two, and three. And let's see what this looks like. There you go. If the Korean band Blackpink was actually a bunch of Rihanna's, uh, this is what it would look like. Not bad. By the way, the developer recommends that you start at point one and then start working your way up. I found out sometimes you got to work your way down. It really just depends on the picture, the model. There's so many factors, but just keep it close to point one. Now, something that's important is that Rube has to like scramble the face or whatever it does. It actually brings back the image with a lower quality. So you're going to have to do a restore face, but I usually use it with maybe 0.5 to find like a, a compromise. In my testing, GFP GAN is a little bit stronger and Codeformer is a little bit more natural. I would try both. Now you can select the type of upscaler that you want to use. Someone told me in the comments that four times ultra sharp cannot be used for commercial purposes. You have to attribute the developer. So before you use this for anything, just make sure you read up on that. So I'm just going to do a one time upscale and don't worry about scripts and click generate. There it is. And that's definitely Angelina Jolie. And you can tell that it's pretty pretty low quality when you zoom in. So you're either going to have to crank up the restore face or come back and upscale this. The choice is yours. But let's check out if we put upscale all the way to one with Codeformer and GFP again. So this is with Codeformer and the teeth are pretty messed up here, but everything else is okay. And it's a little bit more high quality, but still not perfect, right? But that's something you could fix with your own upscale or in paint. So let's try it with GFP again, which is in my opinion, a little bit stronger. All right, so here's with GFP again. It's still a little bit blurry on the head, but it's okay. You know, we can upscale this. We can see around the ear too, there's a little bit of blurriness. But let's take a look at a different model. So all we got to do is replace the picture down here. And let's use this model right here. I'm going to click on generate. Now, it doesn't seem to matter the orientation of the model's face, if they're facing left or right, as long as you can see their eyes, their nose, and their mouth. It seems to work great. 
Just a quick side note, if you really think orientation matters, you can actually open this image up in your default Windows editor, click edit, and then just click on this button right down here to flip the picture around. And then you could save a copy of it. And there you go. Let's compare these two side by side. And it definitely looks like her. The shape of the face, the mouth, the nose, eyes. It looks just like her. Even the eyebrows to some extent. Let's try this with no GFP GAN and see what we get. So now I'm going to set the face restore to zero. As you can see, the quality is pretty bad. So I don't know if you want to work with this. So a little bit of GFP GAN or Codeformer can go a long way. But you can always fix the face in InPaint. All right, so now we have two faces. So this is a perfect example that we could compare side by side. So on the right is the face that didn't get the roof. Then on the left is the one that got the roof. And you can definitely see where the processing happened. I'm going to send this to InPaint real quick. And we're going to try to fix this without using the face fixer. Now for this, you want roof disabled. If you don't, the roof's going to override your inpainting. So let's do that. I masked in her face. And now I'm going to click on only mask. This is really important because it's going to try to grab details from everywhere. Make sure you do only mask when you're doing faces. Now I'm going to erase the prompt because I want the AI to decide what it's going to do for itself. And then I'm going to click generate. As you can see, the face is a lot better, but we've lost some of the detail. So you might want to lower the denoising strength if that's the case, but that's one way you can do it. Let's try one more sample. My denoising strength was super high, so let's put it down on 22-ish. I'm just guessing and click generate. There we go. That's much better and it looks much more like the original. So when you zoom in, it's not so bad and you can do an upscale from here and it'll look pretty nice. The interesting thing with inpainting is that even if you inpaint the character's face on the left here, it really just matters which face you selected for root if it's enabled. So as you can see, I inpainted Angelina Jolie's face here on the left. Now I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to select root. I'm going to upload a picture of the other girl here. I'm going to enable it and set it to one, which is the girl on the right opposite to the face that we inpainted. So let's click generate and see what happens. You can see there's pretty much no change. But if I select the girl, on the left, which is going to be zero in this case, you can see that it listened to me this time and it used the girl's face instead of just putting Angelina Jolie's face there. I do prefer using inpainting for this tool because it changes only the face, nothing in the background. If you use image to image or text to image, sometimes the results might vary depending on your denoising strength. And there's a lot of other factors. Okay, so this is me in the future. And it seems like you don't actually need to inpaint their faces to get it to work anymore. And I'm not sure if it's the update that fixed this or if it's when I put the in swapper file into the models folder for, for root. If you remember earlier, we put a file into the root folder for the models. And um, I think that's what fixed it. But I decided to keep the next portion of the video just in case you have a different experience. Just Make sure you inpaint on the face that you're trying to work on. But the root selector here at the bottom where it says comma separated face numbers is actually what's going to determine where the face goes. So try it without inpainting the face. And if nothing happens, then try inpainting the face. Also, you see some black dots around their neck. I was trying to mesh the skin tone a little bit better. All right, so I have Rihanna's face in here again, and I'm going to put zero for the girl on the left. So let's look at it. So now I need to inpaint the girl's face here in the left. Now her jaw structure is kind of big. So that's something you have to keep in mind when you're choosing a model to do the roof on. And again, I'm leaving the text prompt blank and denoise is going to be set to a pretty low value to around 0.1. Also wanted to point out that you can actually mask both of their faces and the root will actually select the correct one and it'll only put the face on one of the models, but it will still apply a GFP GAN to both of the models. So I'm just going to do one face so I don't smooth out the girl's face on the right and I'm going to click generate. All right. So here's our result and it gave the Rihanna face on the left and it didn't touch the girl's face on the right, which is good. And this is why I use inpainting versus image to image. But let me send that to inpaint and try the other girl's face. So now I'm going to scroll down to Roop. I'm going to click on enable. And then I'm going to put Angelina Jolie's face here. And I think this one's going to do good because she has a pretty big jaw, just like my character. And now it's the character on the right. So I'm going to put one. I'm going to put restore visibility at 0.6. I'm going to choose an upscaler. All right, now I'm going to click generate. So right now it's just doing GFP GAN on her face. It's not actually applying the root. So what I found is you can either restart or you can switch the inpaint area to whole picture. And I don't know why. This is like the one exception when you would be inpainting a face that you would choose whole picture. And I'm going to click generate. And now it added Angelina Jolie's face, even though it's messed up. It's just such a weird kind of workaround. Let's try a different denoising strength so that face doesn't look like that. There we go. That's a little bit better. Denoising is pretty sensitive. So even a 0.1 can make a big difference here. Just a heads up, and this is a big one because it's not going to show an error, but if your content is NSFW or there's nudity, it's not actually going to do it. So um, just keep that in mind and read this here from the developer. 
Then if you have multiple characters in the root source, you're going to notice that it's only going to select the character on the left. And then there's these two check marks at the bottom. Before the update, I didn't have these two check marks and they brought it back from a previous update, but they don't seem to work for me. So if anybody could explain this to me, I would be grateful. But let me show you what it does. So this is what it looks like when both are check marked. And as you can see, I set root to one. So it changed Joey's face over here. Take a closer look. Now let's just try it with swap in source image and see what we get. And this is the result from that. It looked like it tried to do the same thing, but um, worse results. Now let's try it with just swap in generated image check mark. And as you can see, the results kind of similar to the first one. I can't really tell what those do, but um, those are the results. Now, one thing that you may have noticed is that everybody's face looks airbrushed. And that's why I use inpaint instead of image to image, because you could prevent that and then only the face will change. You can go down here and set the seed to try and get it to not change as much, but it's still gonna change a little bit. So just keep that in mind. And I recommend just using InPaint altogether with the techniques that I showed earlier. So that's all I had for this video. I hope you liked it. And I hope Roop is like part of your workflow now. This is a pretty cool tool. And aside from deep faking, you should also use this to get the likeness of a similar character or characters that you liked in the past to put on a different face, whatever you want to do with it. It's much more than a deep fake tool. By the way, they also have a video version, but it's not a Stable Diffusion extension if you want to check that out. I'll put that in my video description as well. Anyways, I hope you liked this video. Go ahead and leave a thumbs up if you did. And I'll see you in the next video. My body in glitter Pop, pop, form sneakers All the boys want a picture Two, two, four cars I make rich look richer Save your breath, baby I'm not going home with y'all